Hi, I'm Joe Dante. This is Trailers from Hell. Whenever people talk about the great romantic screen teamings like Tracy and Hepburn and Gable and Lombard and Abbott and Costello, uh, they always uh, leave out one really good one, which is Elvis and Anne Margaret. And that's because they only made one picture together, this one, Viva Las Vegas, which is as bright and artificial as Sin City itself. After about 10 movies, the Elvis formula was pretty much established. Surround the king with pretty girls, non-threatening actors, and a few old-timers, add songs, often forgettable, and find some attractive locations. With a few notable exceptions, most of Elvis's 31 pictures were essentially the same, and the star, who could have had a terrific career as a real actor, was forced by Colonel Parker to play variations on himself in increasingly cheesy movies full of stupid situations. At a low ebb that began, oddly enough, right after Viva Las Vegas became his biggest hit, the colonel pimped him out for a couple of pictures to schlockmeister Sam Katzman, who brought in screenwriters from Three Stooges movies. But this one, this one is different. Partly because it was directed by MGM musical specialist George Sidney, who had just directed Anne Margaret in her star-making turn in Bye Bye Birdie. Would you like to make a bet? I said the lady loves me. When this boy falls, he really falls hard. But who wouldn't when the girl is seductive Anne Margaret? For many people, Viva Las Vegas is their favorite Elvis picture. For once, all the cliches are swamped by sheer star power, and the title song is a knockout. The only song in an Elvis picture to be sung in one long, uninterrupted take. The unusual thing is that this is as much an Anne Margaret movie as an Elvis vehicle. In fact, it's the only one with no bogus technical advisor credit for Colonel Parker, who fought with George Sidney over the amount of attention devoted to Anne Margaret. Nonetheless, the two great-looking stars absolutely sizzle on screen, as they apparently did off camera. Anne Margaret called Elvis her soulmate and was devastated at his death in 1977. I give, give you my heart. Today, tomorrow, and forever. And it's a pleasure to hear a man's opinion and not have to listen to the stubborn ravings of a boy who won't grow up and. Viva Las Vegas! The 2005 miniseries Elvis dramatized their probable affair with Jonathan Rhys Myers and Rose McGowan as the couple. Look for the ubiquitous Terry Garr in one of her many 60s background bit parts. So the plot here has Elvis as a race car driver in Vegas for the Grand Prix, but he needs a new motor for his car. Amid much singing and dancing, he falls for swim instructor Anne Margaret, but get this, she doesn't dig him right away. And she's being romanced by rich Italian Count Cesare De Nova. What's a poor boy to do? Doesn't sound like much, it's true, but it's a lot of fun. The production is slick and glossy, and it's an attractive time capsule of a long vanished Vegas in the summer of 1963. But none of it really matters because Elvis and Anne Margaret look like they're having the time of their lives, and maybe they really were. Ah!